Here we go on this Monday evening. Hi everyone, it's Eric here with Weather for Weather Geeks. What we like to call Chamber of Commerce weather today. Just absolutely picture perfect as expected. And we're gonna have more days just like this and even warmer than this coming up as we head deeper into the work week. Wanted to start out this evening showing you something cool. This is our uh, view from about 430 miles up today. High resolution, low orbiting satellite picture of the region. Not a cloud in the sky for the most part, maybe a couple of <laughs> clouds over Lake Erie for a time when this picture was taken this afternoon. Now we're gonna compare this shot to a similar day we had about 10 days ago. We had a pretty crystal clear day on April 29th, and here's that shot. And as I toggle back and forth, you can see how much greener the landscape is now 10 days later. Big, big difference between 10 days ago here and today here. So yeah, really cool to check that out when you have two very clear days at this time of the year and try and uh, comparing them uh, to uh, 10 days ago, it really stands out how the landscape has greened up and things are growing like crazy now, especially with all the rain that we've had over the last few days. We didn't have rain today. We had sunshine today. We didn't have snow today. We broke our streak of snowy May the 9th. Uh, after two in a row uh, this year, of course, we did not have any snow, but last year on today's date, 1.6 inches of snow. We had measurable snow at the airport on this same date in 2020. We had five plus inches on today's date in 1966. One of the biggest late season snow events on record for our area occurred on this date back in 1966. So uh, I think we're done with snow for the year. Uh, in fact, that's almost a guarantee at this point. The Last measurable snow of uh, the spring season over the last uh, 30 years. The average day is April the 10th. The latest on record is a uh, May the 15th back in 2016. But here's last year and the year before on May the 9th. So yeah, it looks like we're done with snow. Now what about the odds that we've seen our last freeze of the season? The 30-year average date of the last freeze of the season, right around May 4th or 5th. Um, I would say at this point, you know, we're, we're kind of in between these dates right here. So our historical averages of seeing the last freeze by today's date is up to about 65%. Uh, judging by the pattern this week and into next week, I would put this year's odds that we've seen our last freeze already a little above those historical averages. So I, I'd say there's about a 7 in 10 chance that we've seen our last freeze of the season. This might be a little bit conservative, but a little bit concerned about a somewhat cooler pattern next week, and if we get a clear night and the timing is just right, maybe we flirt with freezing one more time next week. I don't think the odds are very good of that right now. And so, you know, a lot of people are wondering with this nice weather this week, should I plant? Should I start the garden? It all depends on what you're planting, and I don't have a garden. I do not have a green thumb. And so uh, I can't give you a lot of advice on what types of things. Uh, are safe to plant at this time of the year. We ran a segment on 21 News at 6 that I'm sure you can find on our website and app um, that goes into a little more detail on uh, what things you can probably get away with planting this early in the season and what things maybe it's better to wait till you're closer to Memorial Day. So be sure and check that out. This morning was an example of a crystal clear sky and good radiational cooling conditions and a big variation in temperatures across our area. We'll probably have this tomorrow morning as well. Probably won't be this chilly tomorrow morning, but not far above this. You know, some of the colder spots got well down into the 30s. I mean, a 35, 36 degree reading, fairly common in some of the colder spots. And in other places, you know, you didn't drop out of the lower and middle 40s. So, you know, we're going to have a similar situation tomorrow morning where I can't rule out some upper 30s. I don't think anyone's going to hit freezing tomorrow morning. But some upper 30s will be a possibility as our Tuesday gets underway. All right, a couple of days ago, we entered what we call solar summer. This is the three months of the year that we have the most daylight. We just exited solar spring. That's the three months of the year in which we gain daylight at the fastest rate. We're not gaining daylight as fast now, but the overall total daylight we're picking up per day peaks between now uh, and August the 5th. And of course, right in the middle of this is the summer solstice coming up in about five to six weeks, the longest day of the year. All right, our weather's quiet. It's quiet in most of the country this evening with the exception of areas closer to the U.S. Canadian border in the upper Midwest, so tornado watches are out for parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin this evening. Heat is surging northward, though. I mean, yikes, summertime in parts of the middle of the country. It's 91 in Des Moines, Iowa this evening, and Minneapolis, where they're watch watching for the storms, 87 degrees. We're not going to get this warm 
but some of this warmer air is going to slide east over the next few days. So today will be the coolest day of the next few. <clears throat> Pardon me. We had 72 this afternoon. We'll do a few better tomorrow. Not much to show you on Futurecast for the next few days. Lots of sunshine tomorrow, a few cirrus clouds in the mix, and then bright and sunny for Wednesday and into Thursday as well. So yeah, great weather for the next handful of days. I think we're going to be dry through Friday and Friday night. Our weekend forecast does include some rain chances, and you know, we're into the time of the year. A lot of people have outdoor plans on the weekends at this time of the year. Graduations, graduation parties, uh, even wedding season starting to ramp up and that sort of thing. And so the weekend forecasts are, you know, pretty important as we get into May here. And yeah, we're going to be dodging a few showers and maybe a thunderstorm, I think, Saturday afternoon with somewhat better odds of thunderstorm activity and possibly even some strong ones, I think, on Sunday. It's a little too early to it's a lot too early, actually, to get into specifics on severe weather threats this far out. But I wouldn't be surprised uh, with uh, a cold front heading our way if Sunday storms will bear watching for the possibility that some of them could be heavy. But we're hoping to get the clouds out of the way by later Sunday evening because we've got a treat coming our way if the clouds cooperate. A total lunar eclipse is coming our way Sunday evening into the overnight. Now, this gets underway at about 932, but you're not going to see much until later in the evening as the moon enters the penumbra and then eventually the umbra, the uh, partial eclipse really starts in earnest at about 10.30 p.m. And then the total eclipse at about 11.30, reaching its maximum at 12.11 a.m. And then the total eclipse coming to an end at 12.53. So this will be for those who are a little more of a night owl, but if the clouds clear out, this will be worth checking out. Uh, just a reminder, a lunar eclipse is when the Earth gets in between the moon and the sun, and so the Earth's uh, the Earth uh, casts a shadow over the moon, and uh, you know this is something you can look out a, a solar eclipse you can't look out with your 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 naked eyes. You need some protection, but this is something you can uh, easily check out. Again, we want the the uh, clouds to cooperate. If we miss our chance, we'll have another one later this year, another total uh, lunar eclipse that will be visible in eastern North America coming up this fall on November the 8th. All right, pattern heading into next week, I wouldn't say is chilly, but it will be less warm. I think instead of 70s for daytime highs, we're going to have a few days, maybe a handful of days with highs in the 60s, probably a little bit below average, but it doesn't look that cold. And again, with this cooler pattern, I don't want to rule out just yet a close to 32 degree night if the sky is clear for one or two of these nights next week. I don't think the odds are very good of that, but I don't want to rule it out just yet. So a little bit of a cooler pattern next week, but in the meantime, enjoy this fantastic weather for the next several days, and I'll see you back here on Tuesday for a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks.